Okay, so let's take a look at question number six here on how to um, figure out this optimization question um, because they don't give you the equations here um, like they did in question five. So let's just take a look at how we would work this out. So <clears throat> the first uh, statement here says that a kennel mixes brands of dog food and brand X costs $25 per bag. So that's one item we know for cost and brand Y costs $20 per bag. So what we can get out of that is our, our cost equation, okay, the cost to buy food um, for the uh, dog food is going to be 25x, which is 25 times the number of units of brand X, plus 20 times Y, which is the number of units of brand Y. So we are looking to some, in this case, probably minimize the cost because we want to minimize the cost for purchase. Um, so that is um, what we're looking to do when we would uh, be looking at this question. Okay, it's just something to keep in mind. But how do we minimize it? What are the parameters that we would end up um, choosing here? So we're given a table and um, it shows us here that for um, every bag of Brand X, um, there's three nutrients that we're looking at um, uh, getting from the food. Okay, two grams of carbs or two units for carbs, two units for fat, two units for protein. And brand Y has one unit of carb, nine units of fat, and three units of protein. So that gives us something to uh, to think about, like how, how many, how much carbs would we have if we had X brands, X bags of brand X and X bags of brand Y? Okay, so it would be two times X plus one times Y. Um, if we add those two together, that's how much carbs we would have. And then it further goes on to say here the minimum units for carbohydrate and fat and protein are 12, 36, and 24 units respectively. So what does that statement mean? The minimum units of carbohydrates. That means you have to have at least that much or more. Okay, and that's what, that's what the, um, the statement of a minimum means, that you have to meet a certain amount or more. So if we were to think about it here, what we could say is for the carbs, for that nutrient, um, we are going to have two units times the number of bags for um, brand X plus um, one unit times the number of bags for brand Y. So that's just simply 2X plus Y. But if it says the minimum units need to be 12 in this case, that's the unit for carbs, that means we want to have at least 12 or more. So our equation is, can be stated as greater than or equal to 12 because this means that we want to have at least 12 but there's no reason that you couldn't have 13 14 or 15 right so greater than 12 less uh, greater than or equal to 12 okay so that's one of the parameter equations and that's how you would derive it and it goes the same for the fat and the uh, protein ones so it would be 2x plus 9y, okay, and this is for the fat, okay, and again, we have to have a minimum of 36, which means that it has got to be at least 36, but we could have more, it could be 37, 38, 40, 50, right, so that's, that is the, the equation for the constraint for that, and then the protein um, is two units of x plus three times the number of units for y and we have to be at least 24 okay so now we have our equations where we have our cost equation and we have three equations here which are our constraints um, on the quantities and what we want you to do is maximize or hear them um, minimize sorry we're minimizing the cost so we want to find the coordinates or the the amount of bags for x and y that will minimize um, our overall cost all right so the way to do this is that we would have to plot these three equations um, and then see what kind of overlap we have and see what what is the minimum amount um, for some boundary or for some shape that we have here. Okay, and the uh, it's sort of an implied restriction here is that you can't have less than zero bags of um, 
X, brand X or brand Y. So implicitly, we would also have X would have to be greater than or equal to zero, and also Y would have to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Makes no sense to have negative amounts of bags. Okay, so this is why our graph would just start at zero and go positive X and positive Y. Okay, so if we have these equations, um, what I would like to do with this is to use the computer graphing tool in order to plot these, because these questions here, you could, again, rearrange these into point slope form, um, but the, the numbers are getting actually quite big. We have 12, 36, 24 there, so they're a little bit larger to plot, and we want to see um, how these things uh, actually work out accurately, right? So let's just go over to Desmos, okay? Um, I will erase my existing equations and we'll start by entering in our constraints. So our first one was 2x plus um, y is greater than or equal to 12. Okay, that's our first one. And then it was 2x, whoops, 2, uh, 2x plus 9y is greater than or equal to 36. And then we had 2x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 24. Okay, and then we could also have our boundary conditions. We can say x has to be greater than 0 and then y has to be greater than zero. Now all that means is we're just really looking, we're just constraining ourselves to be in the first quadrant on the graph. Okay, so I'm just actually gonna hide these um, just so that we can, we're just gonna assume that we aren't gonna have negative values. So this is what our graph looks like here. So we have a series of three lines, okay? And we need to find where the common overlap is for all the lines. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're, we, we're looking at how the graphs are shaded. So they're all shaded above the lines. And so what we're looking to do is find the points where all of them intersect at some point. So the common shaded area is going to be this following path or this shape in this quadrant. So the first coordinate I'm just going to touch here, we'll write it down, is 0, 12. Okay, so we'll make a note of that. Then we'll go down here and where the, all the lines intersect again or the shaded areas intersect and the, and the boundary is at 3, 6. Okay, and then we're going to keep going because again they shade and intersect right here which is 9, 2. And then the last one here is 18, 0. Okay, and then and so there are no other points that are constrained within that quadrant. Um, remember, we're only looking for positive numbers, so we're not we ignore anything that goes negative. So that is the that is the front what can be called a boundary or a frontier. Okay, of those four points, that what we're looking to do is see which one of those combinations is going to be a minimum. Okay, so I'm going to flip back to the question. Okay, and we can do a simple. Um, we'll just write the points down here. So we have 0, 12, um, 3, 6, 9, 2, and 18, 0. To say, so I would just do a simple t-table. We'll do x, y, and then our cost. And then we'll just plug in our numbers. Okay, and then we'll just calculate which gives us the smallest value for cost. So if x is 0 we're going to have 20 times 12, which is 240. Okay, so remember this would be dollars or a value amount for into money. If we have three and six, so three times 12 is 75. And, th and six times 20 is 120. So that is going to give me 195. Okay, and then nine and two so 9 times 25 is, um, it's more than 200 here, so let's make sure we get the right number. 225, and then 2 times 20 is 40, so that is 265, okay? 
And then our last one to work out here is 18 and 0. So 20 times, one, 20 times 0 is going to be 0. But we're going to have 18 times 25, and that is 450. Okay, so we remember we need to have the minimum amount of nutrients, which is given by our constraints here, but we also want to have the minimum cost. So <clears throat> we can see from the four numbers, the $195 would be the, the minimum. So we would say here that the minimum cost is $195 at three bags okay for brand x and six bags brand y okay so that would be how we would do a minimization um, analysis for that question okay so hopefully that um, is logical and kind of helps you out and takes you through um, how those equations are set up. The key thing in this question here is to understand what the how do you define minimum units of something, okay? Because the implication is that minimum means that you can have at least as much or more. There's no rule that says it has to be, um, you can have more than that amount. If they had said maximum units, then it would be just reversed. We would, the maximum would it would it be, for example, 12, and we could have less than that, but we could never have more than that. Okay, so just to see, just to watch for that and how it's worded.